Hello my dear viewers of the STEER YouTube channel. This is Dr. Palne Raman from Professor Amdekar's team, a practicing pediatrician from Tamil Nadu. Today's topic for discussion is ear discharge. Ear discharge otherwise otoria is a common complaint a practitioner faces day in day to day practice. The substances that the ear can discharge include wax, pus, blood or rarely CSF. Wax is a physiological secretion secreted by the glands of the external ear canal and one needs to only reassure when a patient presents with wax. Anatomically ear discharge can arise from external ear canal or middle ear or rarely from cranial vault. The common causes of ear discharge are 1, 2, 3. One is acute suppurative motitis media or AOSOM. Number 2 is acute otitis externa. Number 3 is COSOM or chronic suppurative otitis media. Rare causes are rarely CSF otoria and it for forgotten foreign body with a chronic ear discharge or a TB granuloma or neoplasms arising from the external or in middle ear. Usually children commonly have acute suppurative otitis media and otitis externa is common in adults, CSOM is common to both. So one when faces a ear discharge in a real world scenario, the first step is to exclude the red flags. Ear discharge associated with the following red flags, immediately you should refer to an appropriate specialist. What are the red flags? Any persistent or severe otalgia or any features of inner ear involvement in the form of vertigo, tinnitus and nystagmus or severe hearing loss, features of mastoiditis, facial nerve palsy and finally a severe cellulitis of the pinna or a malignant otitis externa particularly in a diabetics patient are all the red flags. After ruling out the red flags, what I am going to do? With the help of history and examination, easily you can differentiate the common causes. The onset, duration and progress, nature of the discharge, associated symptoms and the personal and past history will clearly differentiate all of the above. Coming to the onset and duration, if it is less than 6 weeks, it is usually an acute. If it is more than 6 weeks, it is an chronic. And if it is recurrent, more than 3 to 4 attacks per year, with the interval periods are normal, it is known as recurrent otitis media. The nature of the discharge will give a lot of clues. If it is a purulent discharge, mostly you are dealing with the infection. Bloody discharge indicates trauma. If it is a clear discharge, it can be a CSF secondary to trauma to the skull. Associated symptoms gives a lot of clue. For example, pain and pain, severe pain and it, which is relieved after rupture of the tympanic membrane and the onset of the, of the dear discharge, the pain is relieved indicates you are dealing with a separative otitis media. Whereas if the pain is persistent and along with the pruritus, Along with the thin scanty discharge, it indicates you are dealing with the otitis externa. A foul smelling discharge indicates mostly a cholesteatoma or a neoplasm. History of swimming or manipulating the external ear with the help of mainly the pins, needles or cotton is very important for otitis externa. And history of diabetes is very very important why they are more prone for malignant otitis externa and perichondritis. So history is very useful in differentiating all the features. After the history, one comes to the clinical examination. After assessing the hair roughly, he is able to hear, prop hear properly. 
you inspect the external ear with the bright light any features of cellulitis of the pinna or swelling or tenderness behind the ear or pre or postcular post auricular adenitis has to be taken care of then with the help of otoscopy you examine the external ear canal and the tympanic membrane and the middle ear the external ear canal can be completely swollen and red in case of otitis externa with a thin white discharge or if the external ear canal is clear and the tympanic membrane you can see a profuse pus pouring out of the perforation or sometimes you can see bullae in the tympanic membrane suggestive of bullous meningitis or sometimes you can see a marginal perforation or a retraction pocket or a keratin debris secondary to cholesteatoma these are or rarely you can find a foreign body also these are the important findings on external mainly the otoscopy examination as well as you should examination mainly for the cranial nodes mainly facial nerve palsy can be a complication of a otalgia herpeticus or sometimes a complication of asom or casom2 after history and examination after easily segregating the common causes rarely you have to go for investigation sometimes when the pus is pouring and not responding to your antibiotics you can you may need to go for a pus fab for finding the microbial etiology and rarely you will go for the imaging like mri and ct when you are suspecting complications after knowing the etiology the management is very simple you know otitis media is very common in children and the management differs according to the age severity and the number of ear involved if the age is less than 2 if both ears are involved and there is discharge there is no doubt you should start amoxicillin systemic antibiotics are the mainstay of treatment and the topical cleaning and what along with the oral analgesics if the otitis media is severe with a high fever swinging fever with a severe pain or age less than 6 months you should start an amoxiclav when the age is more than 2 years you can wait and watch at times usually the common organisms are pneumococcus non typeable h flu and moraxella so you have to treat these organisms with the help of systemic antibiotics for a for a duration of 10 days coming to the otitis externa the organisms are different usually the pseudomonas and staphylococcus and the management is not systemic it is only a topical management in the form of topical antibiotics with steroids either ciprofloxacin or ofloxacin with a dexamethasone ear drops and oral toilet along with the oral analgesics when it comes to chronic separative otitis media it can be a medical management or surgical management with respect to medical management oral toilet is the mainstay or otalgic ear drops mainly in the form of quinolones like ofloxacin ear drops for a period of 2 to 3 weeks with the proper oral toilet if there is improvement well and good if there is imp- no improvement you have to refer to a ENT surgeon for surgical management and further management expert management hope by this time dear viewers you know concretely and simplified way how to manage a ear discharge thank you very much